Hey, what is up everybody? This is Stevie Breach coming to you here. This is going to be us talking all about the WWE Night of Champions 2015 pay-per-view tonight. Um, it's got some ups, it's got some downs. Um, basically, I'm not going to glorify it. I'm not going to tell you that this is going to be one of the greatest WWE pay-per-views of all time. Uh, but definitely on Sunday, I'm going to be sitting down and I'm going to be watching on the WWE Network. And um, it's going to be one of the shows. And I'm glad that with the WWE Network, we basically get free... Um, pay-per-views now I, you know with the, the 9.99 that i've paid for this month definitely i've i've got my money's worth going on the wwe network and uh, you know watching swerved or watching um you know different shows around there and you know searching through all the on-demand stuff when i look at it um i really get my money's worth with the wwe network i'm grateful that it's here um but definitely uh you know when a pay-per-view comes around i i always think back to when you know we had to pay 50 or 60 dollars to get these shows on pay-per-view and think you know, would this show be worth the money if the WWE Network crashed and we had to buy this uh, the old-fashioned way on pay-per-view? You look around, WWE got out of the pay-per-view business because they thought they were going to make more money off of this, you know, online streaming uh, sort of deal because they're better than Netflix. Um, but, uh, you know, they, they sort of thought the pay-per-view was dying. But uh, you look around, I haven't heard the numbers on the Mayweather um, you know, pay-per-view yet, but definitely if you look at the last Mayweather fight against Pacquiao, three million buys. UFC, uh, their last show might have tanked a little bit with Demetrius Johnson in the main event, not one of the best, um, you know, most must-see fighters there is. He's a very technical fighter, um, but at the same point, he's not a very exciting fighter, um, but uh, definitely uh, their pay-per-view buys on the year are, are way up. Uh, WWE, um, I'm going to talk about this a lot during um, the point when they get to it, but if you go back um, to WrestleMania, um, I believe it was WrestleMania 18, uh, that would be, you know, the, the, uh, the I guess, what is it, the winter uh, in the spring of 2002, uh, of course, you're you're living off the storyline that WCW had closed the year before, um, and a lot of the uh, the big money guys, their contracts were expiring um, from WCW. WWE didn't want to bring these guys in for the one factor of they costed a lot of money. Um, WWE pays guys on, on a little bit lesser of a of a, 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 a scale. But um, they, you know, they they get you know percentages of their merchandise. They get percentages of the gates. Uh, there's bonuses for dates worked. Um, things like this. One thing leads to another. Um, they're paid on a downside guarantee instead of on a WCW contract, which was just a flat rate price. Price. We'll pay you this much to come work for us for this many days. That's basically how their deal went. If if WWE would have brought the WCW guys in and bought out those contracts of Goldberg, Ric Flair, Hulk Hogan, Kevin Nash. You'd have guys like The Undertaker, Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, looking around like, well, what the hell's going on? These guys are coming in. You know, we won the war. Now they're making all this tons of money more than we are. Vince had to let those deals expire. It, it made a ton of sense. It didn't really help out the invasion. Um, but then again, you could be in TNA and looking at the invasion they got going with Global Force Wrestling right now. Um, and, and the big match they're going to have on pay-per-view tomorrow. Um, definitely, um, you know, you think Hulk Hogan finally makes his, uh, his, his debut. He brings in the NWO. Um, they come in at, at No Way Out in February. Um, they, they're a part of WrestleMania. Hulk Hogan really, you know, changes everything at WrestleMania going up against The Rock. The people turn him babyface. They turn The Rock heel. Um, you know, Hulk Hogan would, uh, you know, basically turn out of the NWO the next night on Monday Night Raw um, with them basically kicking them out because he shook hands with The Rock. Um, and uh, from there... Um, I guess Vince just saw the wave of Hulkamania and just was like, man, maybe this shit's not over. You know, he, he got rid of Hulk. He sent him um, to uh, WCW um, and WCW started kicking some ass because they was like they were living that nostalgia of seeing all the old guys from the 80s. Um, they hadn't seen it in a long time. Older people came back to watching wrestling. Uh, people that were in college, uh, you know, hadn't watched wrestling since they were kids. Uh, we're seeing Hogan, Piper, Flair, lots of the old big names, Savage, and uh, started watching Nitro. And they started kicking WWF's ass in the ratings. Um, 
So, you know, Vince went with Hogan again. Hogan won the championship. It was the uh, the rebirth of Hulkamania in WWF, back to the place where it would have belonged, and it crashed hard. People wanted to see Hulk, but people didn't want to see Hulk as champion. I was one of those people. Hulk beat Triple H, two of my favorite guys of all time, and it's one of the, the one of the matches that I wish never happened in the history of the world. Um, you know, Triple H um, building himself up, coming back from the injury, um, you know, winning the Royal Rumble, beating Chris Jericho, and then I think within a month, maybe two months at the most, he does the fucking job, the Hulk Hogan, and Hulk Hogan becomes champ. He only held it for a month, but still it just deflated, I think, a lot of the WrestleMania time. So that's the one thing that I'm thinking about. You know, this this pay-per-view is really built around Sting. Um, it's Sting versus Seth Rollins and what is debatably the main event. Some people say it's going to be on earlier in the match, and John Cena and Seth Rollins will definitely be the main event. But a lot like WrestleMania, Sting is the one guy that everyone's talking about. Can Sting do it? Um, you know, Sting shocked the world by showing up on Monday Night Raw um, when Seth Rollins and Authority tried to unveil the statue. Um, he came out of the box. He started beating up on Rollins. He started holding up the WWE Championship, and he started running around. Um, and he became the main event. Triple H uh, immediately put him in there and, and said, if you want some, come get some. Um, you know, the story is that uh, Rollins is going to have to fight twice. Um you see, I have to fight Cena also on the show. So, you know, when you look at it, it's a Seth Rollins show. Sting is probably one of the big names that they're using to try and draw people in. Uh, I remember Brian Alvarez for a whole month on Wrestling Observer, uh, on, on Wrestling Observer Live, kept on telling people, don't hit the panic button that Sting's not coming in to be the sixth man in the six man tag uh, for the Wyatts versus the Shield. Um, you know, they're more than likely going to bring him in for the October pay-per-view and uh, trying to shock the system uh, and, and give people a, a reason to subscribe when things start going down after SummerSlam. He was a month off. They ended up bringing him in for September, um, but uh, they're directly in the main event. It isn't probably the one thing that I would do, but uh, if Sting is going to be the mystery man going into the Hall of Fame this year, um, this is probably one thing that WWE is going to hit hard, that he was... A uh, championship contender. Uh, they gave it all to Seth Rollins and had a great match at Night of Champions 2015. When you look at the rest of the card from there on out, uh, whether if it's the uh, Neville and the Lucha Dragons uh, going up against um, the Cosmic Wasteland and sort of the comic book of the pre-show, or you have um, the Shield and the Mystery Man going up against the Wyatts, Ziggler versus Rusev, uh, New Day against the Dudleys, Ryback against Owens, Nikki Bella versus Charlotte. Nothing in the undercard is really, you know, pulling at you saying this is a must-see match. So we will have to see, you know, how this show does as an overall. But when it comes down to it, it's three hours of wrestling that's going to be on a Sunday. Um, I'm glad that I get to watch it. It's always fun watching the big shows, especially when you feel like you're stealing them for only ten bucks a month on the WWE Network. So. We'll check this out. We'll run it down from top to bottom. We'll start with the pre-show, work our way up to the main events, and uh, see how we get there. Peace out, everybody.